This LOS is explain the selection of an optimal portfolio given investors utility or risk aversion and the capital allocation line. Risk aversion and portfolio selection. The concept of risk aversion. Risk seeking. If an investor chooses the gamble, then the investor is said to be risk loving or risk seeking. The gamble has an uncertain outcome but with the same expected value as the guaranteed outcome. Thus, an investor choosing the gamble means that the investor gets extra utility from the uncertainty associated with the gamble. Risk neutral. If an investor is indifferent about the gamble or the guaranteed outcome, then the investor may be risk neutral. Risk neutrality means that the investor cares only about return and not about risk. So higher return investments are more desirable even if they come with higher risk. Risk averse. If an investor chooses the guaranteed outcome, he or she is said to be risk averse because the investor does not want to take the chance of not getting anything at all. Utility theory and indifference curves. So here we have a formula. The utility of an investment U equals the expected return minus one half a measure of risk tolerance or risk aversion times the variance or risk. Utility theory and indifference curves. Now this is a pretty important slide. It's putting into words uh, the equation that we saw on the previous slide. So utility is a measure of relative satisfaction that an investor derives from different portfolios. The risk aversion coefficient A is a measure of risk aversion which is measured as the marginal reward that an investor requires to accept additional risk. More risk averse investors require greater compensation for accepting additional risk. Thus A is higher for more risk averse individuals. The risk aversion coefficient A is greater than zero for a risk averse investor. So any increase in risk reduces his or her utility. The risk aversion coefficient for a risk neutral investor is zero and changes in risk do not affect his or her utility. For a risk lover, the risk aversion coefficient is negative, creating an inverse situation so that additional risk contributes to an increase in his or her utility. Here's an interesting fact that's important to note that a risk free uh, asset where variance equals zero generates the same utility for all individuals. So now we can graph the utility theory in indifference curves and on the y-axis as usual we have the expected return and on the x-axis we have risk as measured by standard deviation. So let's look at the two end cases. Here we'll start with the high risk aversion. So you're averse to risk, you do not like risk. You can see that for very little increases in risk, standard deviation, the investor requires much higher um, expected return. So it's a very steep upwards curve. Over here on the other end, a low risk aversion means you're not fearful of risk, means that for much greater increases in risk, the investor requires much less uh, increases in expected return. So the moderate, of course, is following in, in between the two. And the risk neutral is just a straight line. And this is the interesting case to recall is that the risk lover, in fact, the curve is downward sloping. Now we'll move on to portfolio selection for two investors with various levels of risk aversion. Kelly with a risk aversion coefficient of two is here and Jane with a risk aversion coefficient of four is here. The indifference curve for Kelly is to the right of the indifference curve of Jane because Kelly is less risk averse than Jane and can accept a higher amount of risk. So we can see she's accepting a higher amount of risk than Jane, i.e. she has a higher tolerance for risk. Accordingly, their optimal portfolios are different. Point K here is to the right, uh, and that's the optimal portfolio for Kelly, and point J is the optimal portfolio for Jane, okay? So we can see Kelly wants a higher expected return, higher risk. Jane is more risk averse. She does not want to accept more risk. So she has a lower portfolio standard deviation and a lower expected return. So the important thing to note is that you can see
the risk aversion coefficient A is greater than zero for a risk averse investor, and that A is higher for an investor who is more risk averse. In addition, for the same return, the slope of Jane's curve, so now we're looking at the slope of these curves, because Jane is more risk averse, remember, for smaller increases in risk, she requires much greater uh, increases in expected return, so the slope of her curve is more steep than Kelly's, okay? Uh, so that suggests that uh, Jane needs greater incremental return as compensation for accepting an additional amount of risk compared to Kelly. I think the important thing to remember from this graph is one, the slope of these curves, more risk averse, it's gonna be steeper, which is intuitive to accept more risk, you wanna have higher expected return, but here it's on the risk uh, aversion coefficient that the more risk averse you ha are, it's it, the higher the number for A. So we'll just finish this LOS with two quick practice questions to consolidate our understanding. The first one, relative to an investor with a steeper indifference curve, the optimal portfolio for an investor with a flatter indifference curve will most likely have A, a lower level of risk and return, B, a higher level of risk or return, or C, the same level of risk and return. B is correct because a less risk averse investor's highest utility, given the low slope of his or her indifference curve, is likely to touch the capital allocation line at a point which would represent a portfolio with higher risk and more expected return. One last practice question to finish this LOS. If investor A has a lower risk aversion coefficient than investor B on the capital allocation line, will investor B's optimal portfolio have a higher expected return? A, yes. B, no, since investor B has a lower risk tolerance. Or C, no, since investor B has a higher risk tolerance. Okay, the correct answer is B. Investor B has a higher risk aversion coefficient, therefore a lower risk tolerance and a lower expected return on the capital allocation line. Remember, A is a measure of risk aversion, which is measured as the marginal reward that investor requires to accept additional risk. More risk averse investors require greater compensation for accepting additional risk. Thus, A is higher for more risk-averse investors. So one of my uh, pieces of advice for this type of question is don't try to work it all out in your head because you've got A, B, higher than, lower than. Remember, just draw it out. So we know that uh, a lower risk aversion coefficient, a lower number, is to the right. And here's the higher number. So it says investor A has a lower coefficient. So it's here. This is A. So label it, just do your quick graph, and then this is B. And then they're asking, does B have a higher expected return? No, if you just do a quick graph, you can say no. So A is out, and then it's, I have to look at B and C, and B has a lower risk tolerance. Of course they have a lower risk tolerance. They have a, so B is correct, and C is wrong. Investor B does not have a higher risk tolerance. So just by redoing your quick little graph, and then matching it up with the A or B, higher than, lower than, uh, this, this question becomes fairly easy. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.